your presence in this space is no mere coincidence. It's a meticulous and intentional connection designed to deliver the profound message of Apostle Joshua Selman directly to you. This message goes beyond being a mere source of blessings. It's a dynamic force, sparking the flame of greatness within you. Open your heart expansively and permit your mind to fully immerse in the opulence of this transformative diet. Before we venture further, I extend a sincere invitation for you to actively participate in this meaningful content. Engage by expressing your gratitude. Extend a virtual thumbs up to the video, share its wisdom with those in your circles who could find it beneficial, and become a subscriber to our channel. The reason why you will come out of every challenge tonight is because Jesus came out of the grave. Let me tell you this. If he came out of the grave, it became the basis of coming out of anything that looks like the grave. Are we together now? Yes. Because he came out of the grave, you can come out of anything, any problem, any challenge. I don't care what it is. Number three. Number two. The resurrection gave credibility to all other words that Jesus spoke. I'm doing a recap. We're doing a one-minute crash course on the implication of the resurrection. I've taught it somewhere, not in Koinonia, but we have a teaching where I will reiterate this. And when you hear me teach that on that day, don't assume you wrote it now. I've not explained it at all. You are just believing I will take time to teach you. Hallelujah. Koinonia is not a place where we do conferences. This is where you are mentored methodically. So I'm not afraid of taking it one by one to teach you until you have that understanding. But just for your knowledge, Jesus said in many instances in scripture that he was going to die and come back to life. The resurrection gave credibility to every other word. If Jesus did not resurrect, then it means we have a right to doubt every other thing he said. The reason why we can believe any other thing he said was that the most implicating statement he made, he defended it. Did you hear what I said? The most implicating statement any man can make is to dare boast that you will die and bring yourself back to life. He said it and he kept it. That means any other thing of lesser value, he said it, is worth believing. The resurrection gave credibility to every other word. Hallelujah. Three, the resurrection has now become the central theme of the gospel of salvation. This is the third implication of the resurrection. Every time we talk about the gospel of salvation, the central theme is not his earth work. The central theme is not his death, not his burial. The central theme of the gospel of salvation is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number five. The resurrection, powerful now. The fifth implication the re number what ah okay the resurrection established the victory of christ over sin satan death and the grave i like this one the resurrection of jesus christ it was a final stamp establishing his victory over sin his victory over satan his victory over death and his victory over the grave Hallelujah. Are we together? So his victory over sin, Satan, death, and the grave. Number five. The resurrection. Today allows anyone who believes in Jesus to be a partaker of his life and victory. The resurrection today allows anyone who believes in Jesus to be a partaker of his life and a partaker of his victory. This is powerful. Ordinary me, ordinary you, for simply believing in Jesus and believing the gospel, we are made partakers of his life and partakers of his victory. This is the reason why we can walk in that victory for ourselves and we can become extensions of that life and victory to as many, even at a miracle service like this. We are partakers of his life and partakers of his victory. 
on account of the resurrection. Can I give you a final thought? Number six. This is powerful. The resurrection today gives every believer in Christ hope beyond death and hope beyond the grave. The resurrection today gives every believer in Christ hope beyond death and hope beyond the grave. I can spend all day teaching this. The resurrection today gives every believer in Christ hope beyond death and hope beyond the grave. That means if you've lost any loved one at all, no matter how long and no matter how sad the event was, if that believer died in Christ, then you are encouraged. The resurrection tells you one day you will see them again. One day you will see your father. One day you will see your mother. Oh yes, you will. You imagine anybody who has died in Christ as a visitor who had a long journey. And for you as a believer, when you contend for long life, it's not out of fear. It is to give you the allowance to live serving the purposes of the kingdom. But you have an orientation that to live is Christ. But that if you die, is gain. So when you cry over people who die in Christ, it's simply because of the temporary emotional disconnect. But we do not cry as people who are hopeless. No. One day there will be a glorious sound. The sound of an archangel. May it be during a koinonia service. That while we are shouting here, I will drop this mic for you if you are interested in carrying it. Goodness, my God. Yes, sir. If you're interested in carrying it, you can carry it and say all you want. You will think I'm joking, but it will happen one day. And if you are in this place and you know you are not going, you better listen and when it's time for an altar call, take your destiny serious because the Bible says it will happen. Anybody can argue about that, but it will happen. I assure you by God. It will happen. Hallelujah. Wonderful service. For some who all go to bed in the night. And suddenly that, that trump by the archangel. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive and remain, the Bible says, we will be caught up. Together we will meet with him in the air. And that will be the end of it. We will wrap our dispensation as we know. Fold it like a curtain. And allow the other activities that are to happen on the earth while we witness from a plane and a dimension that is beyond this realm. When all is done, then the old heaven and the old earth is folded away. And the Jerusalem, the tabernacle from heaven, God descending to be in the midst of his people. He being the light of that city himself. A Christian is one who believes all this truly. And the Bible says to comfort one another with these words. So while we do the things that we do on earth, we have somewhere at the back of our minds that someday this life will be folded like a curtain and we walk conscious of that reality. Have you been blessed? Now I can say for everybody who means business with Jesus, happy is sir. Hallelujah. You believe that? Amen. My teaching for tonight. Everything that you have been receiving, this is um, an appetizer. <laughs> Koinonia for you. Are you ready? Two scriptures for tonight. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 12 to 14. Lend me your attention now. Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, uh -huh. who hath delivered us from the power of darkness 
and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Powerful scripture. Amplify it, please. The thief cometh not, or the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and to destroy. What's his threefold ministry? To steal and kill. Not steal or kill or destroy. He will do all three. Building one upon another. To steal, in addition to stealing, kill, in addition to killing, destruction. But Jesus said, I am come, or I came, that they, including everyone here, may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. The meaning, to the full till it overflows. Shout amen. Yeah. Now, according to scripture, there are two kinds of life that every man on earth has an opportunity of experiencing. Please listen carefully. There are two kinds of life. Essentially, everyone born by a woman, every human who finds himself in this side of God's kingdom, according to scripture, is given an opportunity within the span of his lifetime. Are we together? To experience one or preferably two of these kinds of life. Number one is called the biological or physical life. Your biological or physical life. Let's walk very quickly. So the first kind of life that every man born at all has an opportunity to experience. What is the biological life? The life that an individual can have at the point of conception or delivery. You are given an opportunity from the time of conception up until you are delivered and then you grow and live your life. You have the biological or physical life the possibility of that life based on spirituality and biology we are taught that it stands at the point of conception you are given an opportunity to experience that life for no matter how short a time every man who passes through the earth are we together now has an opportunity to experience that life the biological physical life Number two, the second kind of life is called Zoe, God's supernatural abundant life. Zoe, God's supernatural abundant life. God's supernatural abundant life. This life is spiritual in context. This life is spiritual in context. However, it is lived out in the physical realm. It is spiritual in context. Are we together? It is not biological, meaning it does not depend on your being born by a woman. No. Being born by a woman affords you the opportunity to have the biological or physical life. Are we together? But the moment you have that, you are qualified that if you walk in keeping with the terms that administer the second dimension of life, you can have Zoe, God's spiritual, supernatural, abundant life. It is spiritual in context, but it is lived out in the physical realm. Now listen, I wrote something here that I want you to please listen to. God's life, what we call Zoe, this second but higher dimension of life, it came as an improvement and a remedy to the limitations that come with the biological life. The life Zoe, this abundant life, we call it eternal life or everlasting life. You see that now? It came as an improvement and then a remedy to the limitations that came with the physical life. In 1 Corinthians, I believe, uh, 1545, I think 15, give us 44 or 45. I think it's 45. Yes. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Are we together? And the last Adam, not just the second Adam, the last Adam was made a quickening or a life-giving spirit. That means 
even if Adam did not fall, listen to me, the life that we now have in Christ is still more superior than the original life or to the original life that Adam had. Are we together? The life that we are given in Christ is not the same life Adam had before the fall. Adam was a living soul that degenerated to become an embodiment of sin through the fall. But that the life that we have in Christ today, Zoe, makes us beyond living souls. We are now life-giving spirits. It's a superior kind of life. Are we together? So I said that this life, Zoe, came as number one, an improvement. And then a, a remedy. It came to remedy the degeneration that happened through the fall. Reducing man to become an embodiment of sin. And then it came as an improvement to the life that man had. The way it is called. Now, um, let, let, let me use the example of our apps. How many of you have seen whether your, as you use your phone, your gadgets, there are times that the phone will tell you there is an update. Is that true? It will tell you that there is an update. Do you know that as far as the company responsible for the applications, they have sent the update and it has reached your phone. And many times they can even list for you the new features in the updates that both improve the quality of your device and remedy for certain flaws in the older version. Am I right on that? Praise the name of the Lord. So it will tell you that there is an update, but in most cases it will give you an option whether to update immediately or at a later time and you can keep postponing forever the manufacturers as far as they are concerned you should already be enjoying the richer better experience of that application but because you have not taken advantage of the update the potential is already flashing on your phone but whether you walk in the experience of it or not you can still be suffering the limitations of the older version Whereas the possibility for an update is there. Are we together? God's life came as an improvement and a remedy to the limitations that come with the physical or biological life. Now please pay attention everyone. I wrote something else here that I want you to listen to. The presence of sin the presence of the wickedness of men and the presence of demonic activities, three factors. You want to benefit from this miracle service, listen to this point. The presence of sin as a nature producing the outworkings of unrighteousness, the presence of the wickedness of the hearts of men and the presence of demonic activities makes it impossible to live an excelling life from a purely biological standpoint. That means there are three factors that makes it impossible to maximize life if the only thing you have is the biological life. The presence of sin as a nature in man. In iniquity did my mother conceive me, the psalmist said. Are we together? So in every man programmed in our DNA, by reason of the fallen nature is the nature of sin that will now produce the outworkings of unrighteousness in its variety that it's a nature that is in a, enshrined in all men the only remedy to that nature is receiving the life of god are we together the presence of sin then the presence of the wickedness of men then the presence of demonic or satanic activities makes it impossible to live an excelling life and to maximize life from a purely biological standpoint. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, God looked down and he saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Who saw it? God. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This was God's verdict. When he looked from heaven, he saw that something had happened to man. 
by reason of the falling nature that the imaginations in the heart of man was only wicked continually and that because of that very factor it is impossible for you unassisted to truly walk in the experience of victory if all you have is just the biological life men will not even allow you to enjoy your life that's what i'm trying to say that men are wicked so wicked you don't have to look for anybody's trouble they fabricate imaginations and make sure they stop you from enjoying the liberty that is in Christ. Are we together? So because you get married, someone gets angry and says, On over my dead body for you to enjoy your marriage. Men for you. you say, ah, I just got a job with an oil company. An oil company before me. All right. You see that now. It is the reality. God's verdict about men is that the imaginations in the hearts of men the wickedness of man was so great that's why he sent the flood to purge the earth the presence of sin the presence of wickedness in the hearts of men and the presence of demonic activities makes it impossible first john 5 19 the bible says now we are of god and the whole world lieth in wickedness the whole world ladies and gentlemen not just abuja not just nigeria not just africa not just america europe wherever once you are on earth it says the whole world lieth in wickedness hallelujah in john chapter 5 very interesting discourse jesus healed the man at Bethesda if you recall and when he healed the man the man got up and went away and the scribes and the Pharisees were angry and they began to challenge Jesus's healing ministry saying that don't come and heal a man on a Sabbath day there are other days in the week let that man be healed that day and when Jesus saw the man give us from verse 12 I think 12 to 14 for sake of time but the full text is John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 14 and they asked, then they, then asked they to him, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed, which not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Verse 14. Afterwards, this was, this, this is my emphasis. Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, watch this, behold, thou art made whole. He says, sin no more, lest a worse thing comes upon you. So we know what brought the problem in the first place. You see that now. He's telling him that the cause for this thing, whether it is sin caused by you or inherited by bloodline, this has been responsible for this bodily tragedy you are suffering. And he says, as you go, he said, sin no more. Less a worse thing will come upon you. So the nature of sin, the presence of sin, the presence of the wickedness in the heart of men, and the presence of demonic forces. Demonic forces. The Bible is full of expressions that there are demonic forces that spy upon the liberty of the saints day and night. Satan is ever determined, listen, to destroy your destiny and my destiny. And if allowed, he will wreck your life, wreck your ministry, wreck your family, wreck your reputation, wreck, destroy everything. The thief he's called, that when he comes, there is no sparing. He is vicious, merciless in his operation. He will steal, he will kill, and he will destroy. Now, from a purely physical and biological standpoint, it is impossible to live a life, I wrote here, that captures total health, longevity, listen now, impact, favor, advancement. You cannot experience all of this from a purely biological standpoint. No, something will be wanting in your life. You cannot enjoy total health if all you have is just biological life. No matter how you eat well, no matter how you do your gym, profitable as they are, demons don't care whether you are gymming every day or you are eating cabbages and veggies. When they come, they are vicious. They will plant wicked diseases that you cannot trace to any mismanagement in terms of nutrition. Satan for you. Hallelujah. How about longevity? 
Do you know? The Bible says, with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to live long if you don't live well. Because it becomes like a curse. There are many people today, long life is a curse to them. I tell you the truth. They pray for death and pray for death and the spirit of death will never come to them. Do you know why? Because the devil enjoys their being tortured. They are kept in a state where they cannot help themselves, but they become liabilities to any other person, yet they will not die. Do you know the Bible says when the church is raptured, it says that because of the persecution of the Antichrist, this death that people are running away from, that people will come to the mountain and say, fall on us, so that we'll die and escape this, and death itself will run away from them. It is not wise to just live long if you are not going to live victorious. With long life will I satisfy you, but within that long life I will show you my salvation. Hallelujah. Now, please don't, don't feel sad, and, 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 and this is not to play with your emotions. I've had the honor of praying for people, and I've had the time, I've, I've seen situations where families themselves, out of love, they pray for their loved ones to just die. Not because they hate them. There are people who live perpetually in pain. And after 10 years, they are still there. They can't move. They can't use the toilet. They can't stand. They can't do anything. People have to resign their jobs to stay with them. And these are family members. I pray for you in Jesus' name. If you must live long, live well. Receive it as a prophetic word. If you must live long, live well. You will not live long and sick. Shout a believing amen. You will not live long and the only part of your body moving is your eyes. Every other part of you is dead. Yet for 10 years you will still be alive. That is torture like hell. I tell you. You ask medical practitioners. Sometimes even though they have the versatility of experience. They've had to stand before patients to cry and weep like children. Hallelujah. You see people damaged and degenerated as if they are not God's creation. And yet they will not die. I'm saying it to you again. If you must live long, receive the grace to live well. So from a purely biological standpoint, it is impossible to capture within that life, unassisted by the presence of eternal life, many possibilities like supernatural health, longevity, with dignity, a life of impact from a kingdom standpoint, a life of favor, a life of advancement. There are defects and limitations that come with living purely biologically. That is what we call existence, not living. And there are many people who are just existing and not living. Celebrating birthdays every year, wonderful as it is, but with nothing credited to their life that demonstrates dignity. If all you have in this place whilst you are listening to me and across the airwaves is just biological life, the life that came from your mother giving birth to you, I congratulate you for being alive, but there is an effective superior life that Jesus came to give us. Are we together? It's called Zoe, his life. It's not the life given to Christians. It's the life given to all men who believe in Jesus. Let me repeat myself again. It's not a life given to Christians. The Bible says, whosoever believeth on him. John 3, 16. Whosoever, an unbeliever who believes in him. A supposed outcast who believed in him. Someone who has had your life destroyed and degenerated by wrong decisions. That at the point you believe in him. There is a law in the spirit that you should not perish, but have everlasting, abundant, superior life in all its ramifications. But I am come that ye may have life and to have that life more abundantly. Now, this is the zenith of my charge this night. Listen carefully. Enjoying and maximizing the Zoe life demands that you walk in keeping with four factors. Enjoying 
please write enjoying and maximizing the zoe life this eternal life this all superior life that has come from jesus to us as a gift enjoying and maximizing the zoe life demands that you walk in keeping with four factors if you do not understand this part then tonight's miracle service will hardly profit you are you ready number one the first factor that you must walk in keeping with if you are to enjoy and maximize this eternal life is that you must number one have an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God Jesus the son of the living God the first factor that you must walk in keeping with if you want to receive enjoy and even maximize this new life called eternal life a non-negotiable condition and in order of priority you must encounter Jesus the son of the living God very quickly first John 5 11 and 12 first John 5 11 and 12 this is the record or the testimony that God had given to us eternal life the Bible says and this life is in his son verse 12 he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son hath not life it's as simple as clear as that in John chapter 3 from verse 15 to 17 Jesus is speaking with Nicodemus that whosoever believeth in him should not perish 15 says but to have eternal life now verse 16 popular scripture for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life 17 it says God did not send his son I wish many people would hear this that God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world but that the world through that son might be saved are we together the first demand that you must walk in keeping with is an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God number two the second demand the second factor that you must keep to enjoy and maximize eternal life are you ready is knowledge 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 the administration of eternal life like you have learned again and again in this house is knowledge dependent say knowledge now back to my example of your applications and the updates so here you are having various updates sometimes it will list as much as 10 15 updates are we together now and it gives you the liberty to if you know how to use them well you can update every one of them but in ignorance you will not even know you are supposed to update the applications so even though it has been given it takes knowledge Ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts you can be genuinely saved genuinely saved the same way the app was really at your phone your phone has that application but never enjoy the riches that come with that life you need knowledge the knowledge of the promises and the benefits that come with this life you have received and scattered all through scripture you find it in Psalm 103 you find it in you know all through the Gospels and even the epistles various expressions of these promises and these benefits that come with the Zoe life I've taught you many times the Bible says bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name verse 2 says bless the Lord O my soul and forget not his benefits this scripture has a capture of some of them number one who forgiveth all thine iniquities number two who healed all thy diseases number three who redeemed thy life from destruction deliverance number four who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies number six who satisfied thy mouth with 
good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. This is a, a capture of some, the many other benefits. But you must know what has come to you on account of this eternal life. So the first factor is an encounter with the son of the living God. Number two, knowledge. Number three, what is the third requirement? To enjoy this life that you have received in Christ. Faith to appropriate the promises that come with that life. Again, faith to appropriate the promises that come with that life. What is faith? Action. What is faith? Obedience. Faith to appropriate the promises that come with that life. Knowing that you have been given exceeding great and precious promises is not enough. You must have the faith to engage. The faith to obediently engage with the promises, to appropriate the promises that come with that life. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Enjoying eternal life as the just happens by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. And if any man draws back, he says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. I think it's 39. Let's try 39. If he has something I'm looking for. Yes. He says, but we are not of them who draw back in unto perdition. He says, but of them that believe unto the saving of the soul. Your believing is unto something. Salvation. The journey of the believer and your excelling. As far as this faith life is concerned, as far as eternal life is concerned, is faith dependent. Many times they cried unto Jesus, increase our faith. And he did not consider their request as unnecessary. The Bible lists for us various levels of faith. You have been taught here, a quick recap. No faith, little faith, great faith, exceeding great faith. These are the four levels of faith. And all of them do not purchase the same dimension of spiritual reality. No faith, little faith, great faith, exceeding great faith. Hallelujah. This is the victory that overcome the world, the Bible says, even our faith. So you need an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. Second, you need knowledge, high level spiritual illumination as touching the promises and the benefits that come with this life. Number three, the faith to engage, the faith to appropriate the promises that come with this life you have received. Finally, are you ready? The final factor you must walk in keeping with is that you must understand the warfare dimension of experiencing eternal life. The warfare dimension of experiencing eternal life the warfare dimension of experiencing eternal life ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 please for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world hmm against spiritual wickedness in high places look up please let me pause for a moment here and pass a very quick comment here for many people they believe that the warfare of the believer is just at the realm of the mind i don't agree rulers are not thoughts are we together now rulers are real spirits with presence and personalities are we together jesus casted out real spirits from people he didn't cast out imaginations alone there were real spirits in people who spoke to him he spoke back to them asked them to be silent and casted them away are we together now angels are a cater of spirits Demons are a cater of spirits called unclean spirits. There are unclean thoughts. There are unclean imaginations. But there are unclean personalities who have life called spirits. If your only understanding of warfare ends in the realm of the mind, you will not do justice to your victory. There are thoughts, yes, are in the realm of the mind. Imaginations sponsored by spirits. Yes. But there are real personalities that are sent to visit, oppress, manipulate believers and unbelievers alike. They are called unclean spirits. 
Jesus gave us power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Are we together? So I just needed to take a pause there to help you know that when it has to do with warfare, a major part of warfare happens in your mind, but it does not stop there. The belief that warfare just ends in the mind is not very accurate. You will confront real spirits in your life. Real spirits with personalities like any other spirit. Hallelujah. So when we stand upon the strength of the finished work of Christ, on one hand, we are standing upon the victory that has been finished in Christ. But then we engage these appropriation systems. An encounter with the Son of God makes that life available to you. Knowledge begins to diffuse that life into your experience. Are we together? Yeah. Faith makes it a reality. Warfare helps you to maintain that victory. Because I assure you, even Jesus, when he walked upon the earth, as the Son of God, the embodiment of that Zoe, the logos of God in action, Satan did not fold his arms and leave him. I have met many demon spirits in my life as a man of God. I know they exist. Number one, because the Bible says so. Number two, I have not just seen them. They have confronted me. I'm not talking of a dream. You slept and had a dream and saw whatever it is. And I'm not talking of a movie where you are watching all kinds of things. I have met spirits. They have spoken to me. I have seen them. The memory is etched in my mind forever. I know how they look. I can draw them. You see, the things we have seen. I have seen spirits that oppress people. I have seen spirits that control poverty. I've seen spirits that come in and slip their way through destinies and begin to rewrite rubbish. Some of you are here right now because of the negative influence of those spirits. Casting a negative embargo upon your life that makes things to not be the way God says should be. Even though you have received eternal life, you cannot see the outworkings of eternal life. No favor, no grace, all doors closed, all helpers departed from you. Only evil report gets to the ears of your helpers. Everything good you do, there are spirits that hold them and bury them. And the only thing that proceeds to those who can help you is something negative about you. Calling good evil and calling evil good. Spirits for you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the truth. Behind most of the tragedies of the saints and the inhabitants in the earth are a myriad of evil spirits walking day and night to make sure they kill everything they can kill. When the Bible says the thief comes to steal, he does not walk alone. Satan is not omnipresent, he's not omniscient, he's not omnipotent. He walks with an array, there is an, an organized satanic keda. Paul himself gave us an intelligent exegesis that the demonic realm is arranged with intelligence. Satan was once with God and he did not lose the memory of organization when he fell. He has an array of wicked spirits programmed to regions, programmed to offices, programmed to families, programmed to individuals. Every believer in Christ has at least one set of spirits sent to you. At least a set. And a set is not one. If you ever had the voice of one, you are joking. The demon spirits that are on earth and around this domain, they far outweigh the inhabitants of the earth such that a legion can manage one body. Did you hear what I said? There is such scarcity of accommodation for demon spirits that a legion should be about six to 10,000. They can make do with one body. So if you think it's only two spirits looking for you, I want you to think again. When you said, God, I will serve you, they had the confession. When you say, God, use me, they had the confession. Are we together? When you prayed and you say, God, let me be the first person to take away shame from my family, they had you. It is not God that responds to the prayers of the saints alone. Demons also respond to the prayers. When they see you fasting and praying, they see something rising from your room to the heavens. They are sent. What is going on here? 
we need to find out okay ah, he's praying in tongues we cannot understand we are not given to understand but let's study the activities of angels to give us a clue of what he's asking because the angels ascend and descend they excel in strength and they confirm the word so they may not know what you are saying in the prayer language but they can see the returns ascensions and descendings they see what the angels are bringing favor has a, is a spiritual substance you can see it in the spirit and know the difference between favor and any other spiritual thing physically they they are very abstract to the mind but in the realm of the spirit you can see favor there is substance to favor there is substance to speed hmm. are we together oh sometimes they see angels coming and there are certain angels the moment demons see they know that there is you are entering a new season in your life go and read your bible you will never see gabriel roaming around the earth but if gabriel shows up he's bringing a message that defines seasons you never see michael showing up just like that no there are rankings among these spirits So when certain angelic activities begin to happen, the signal is sent across the earth because with what is happening in your room, the salvation of 10 million people is connected to it and the demons will not keep quiet. They will say, you know what? Attack this person as fast as you can before the ministry starts. Attack the prayer life. Attack, bring poverty. Make sure the helpers don't reach there. My goodness, I came tonight to disappoint darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I came tonight to establish over your life once and again the victory that is settled in Christ. Do you believe that? This is why we are here. Now listen to me. When we gather in an apostolic and prophetic atmosphere like this, it is important for you to know what God wants to do. Number one, God wants to heal. He wants to heal. The meaning of that is that if you are sick and you are in need of healing, physical, emotional, etc., open up your heart to know that the grace to make that possible is there and then know how to respond accordingly so you don't share the grace don't come here sick and allow the grace to be shared and you walk back it is your responsibility to connect with the anointing what is god doing restoration we live in time how could god ignore restoration we live in time did you hear what i said we live in time meaning that for the most part Time is always, always against many people. What is God doing? Deliverance. Bringing separations. Do you know the reason why we hold services every time ministering to people? You would think that because you've ministered once, if I had my way, every day or every week will be a miracle service in, a, in addition to teachings. You know why? And truly every week is. It's just that there are times dedicated for this. I'll tell you why, number one. Because at the point you are ministering to people, there are people who have not grown yet in their spiritual life to know that they need to receive. So you don't punish them because of their carelessness. By last month's miracle service, some of you had not seen the need for it. Now you are better prepared to receive. That's why God brings it again. And then there are newer people who are coming to the faith every week and every time. This is why in the package of a miracle service, there are provisions for everyone. If you have gotten to a point where your body has received the revelation of eternal life to live healthy, how about advancement? How about new wine? How about open doors? How about the assignment he gave you? Then how about your loved ones? Hmm. Hallelujah. How about poverty? How about failure? How about the attacks? There are certain attacks around your life now that you do not yet have the level of illumination to walk in the experience of victory. And if God does not create platforms like this for you to come under a prophetic covering to help you while you grow, you may not even leave for that ministry to start. 
God has called into an apostolic and a prophetic ministry. You have no idea the attacks that are before you. And so God brings you to be shielded. Even if you are Moses, he hides you for a while and allows you grow. Otherwise, if hell launches his attack and that attack meets with your ignorance, you will not even start the work in the first place. Listen, hear me. Do you know why some of us are in this state now? And I want you to believe me. There are battles your parents refuse to fight. Listen to me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. There are battles that if your parents agree to fight by the Spirit, by now, you would have been 10 years ahead of your contemporaries. But you've not even started fighting your own battles for destiny. You are still managing a backlog of battles. And God sent you here to receive help. And there are some of you right now, if you abscond from it carelessly, you are programming trouble for your children. Man of God, God has brought you here to help you. The kind of ministry God has given you, you do not yet have the stamina to excel in that ministry. And you take an arrogant, careless step without help, you will be surprised how you will go down. The satanic kingdom is an intelligent system. It's an intelligent system. The victory of the believer is established in experience on account of spiritual intelligence and faith. If all it took was just knowing what Christ has done, then God will not waste his time giving us the anointing. The presence of the anointing is clue as to how stubborn Satan is. Did you hear what I said? The presence of the anointing, in spite of the finished work of Christ, the presence of the anointing that God still anoints and re-anoints in ever-increasing measure is proof that there is a stubborn satanic cadre that will not let your destiny go, not without a fight. And while I was praying, I cried to God. I said, Lord, let this miracle service not just be a waste of people's time. Let it be that somebody will come here. Look at the testimony of the lady. Bleeding profusely. You heard the testimony. Look at that kind of demonic thing. Bleeding profusely. And yet, medical science could only go so far. The enemy has done this. You may not be bleeding as a woman. But when, you see, blood stands for life. When life is drained out of you, what is left is death. Life can be represented as your finances, can be represented as any other thing. But the woman with the issue of blood said, I will not wait till he comes to me. Jesus had no business seeing her. She created space for her miracle that day. If you were Jesus' secretary that morning, you would not record as part of his itinerary that he was going to heal a centurion, nor a woman with the issue of blood. The major miracles that happened that day came on demand. Anger and hunger combined together. If you were writing as a secretary of Jesus, you probably would not write that today. Part of the itinerary is that a, a woman with the issue of blood, 12 years, all of them were 12, 12 years old. Jarius' daughter, 12 years. The woman's problem, 12 years. And two of them got angry and said, today is today. Like someone needs to be angry. Whether a word of knowledge comes from me or not, one thing I know is I'm not walking out of here the same way I came. Listen, it's going to be a very quick one. And as I pray for, do you know why many people don't get healed? It's not because the power of God is not in, you know, in a place where God is moving. It's that most of them don't know how to engage. As the power of God rests upon you, do what you couldn't do before and begin to celebrate when it's time to announce miracles. Don't sit back there. Don't say, I am far there. No. As the fire of God comes upon you, sometimes I ask the ushers to bring the people out. It's not showmanship. There are levels when God has lifted you. Every point to be proven has been proven. You see, when we ask people to come out here who are under the influence of the anointing, it is because there is a completion to that process of deliverance that God makes. Sometimes I wish we had all the time to prophesy one by one. If I mention a case that is your own, don't waste the time of others. 
and just stroll and come out as if you are taking your time if you are not sure sit down don't allow someone go back without their miracle because you are careless are you ready now father i am ready to receive pray violently and passionately go ahead and pray outside pray all the overflows pray online make sure you pray hallelujah everybody pray whatever makes you use your money to service sickness use your money to service police cases court cases you never have the opportunity to enjoy the blessings of god upon your life that god has been faithful but your money is always used to resolve tragedy from today may tragedy be too late for your life did you hear what i said may tragedy be too late for your life too late for your life too late for your business too late for your ministry too late for your family in the name of jesus shout a sevenfold amen two three four five six seven give jesus a hand clap of praise and a shout of victory hallelujah because you have believed it prepare to come and stand here testifying because you have believed it prepare to stand here to testify in jesus name i pray keep standing everyone i'm hearing in my spirit rebuke the cost that is upon firstborns rebuke the cost that is upon my god fire is going to fall here now if you are a firstborn every cost Baratos Kayata, not allowing you to move forward, making your younger ones to go ahead of you by the apostolic and the prophetic. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Bring them out. Every course of the firstborn, first male, first female, first child, tying your destiny down and will not let you move forward. This is koinonia. Be delivered now. Bring them out. Bring them out. My God. Boss of the firstborn. Be released. Structural establishment. In 30 days from now. In the name that is above all names. And I say this prophetically. May my God surprise you. Beyond your savings beyond your current resources may my God surprise you houses you did not build vehicles you don't have the money to pay for let favor bring it to your doorstep hallelujah hear me you have any gift upon your life that can announce you to the nations but who to connect with may be what is missing i pray for you right now that gift stops being silent from today that gift stops being silent from today those who need your gift may they find you those who need your gift may they find you those who can reward you for your gift may they find you in the name of jesus Therefore, I declare over these requests by the power of the Holy Spirit. The next request you will be writing will be for others, not for yourself again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. I am certain that the sermons you've embraced have been a wellspring of blessings, lifting your life and igniting a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve God. We extend a heartfelt invitation for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel ensuring you remain connected and never miss any upcoming videos by activating the notification bell. Your subscription transcends a mere click. It symbolizes a dedication to continual spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled odyssey with us as our channel strives to become a sanctuary for both spiritual seekers and steadfast believers. We staunchly believe in the transformative prowess of God's Word and our objective is to disseminate messages that deeply resonate with the essence of your soul.
Become a part of our community. Subscribe and let the radiant light of divine wisdom, your presence is integral to this uplifting journey. And may the abundant blessings of God overflow in every facet of your life. Amen. Stay connected with us across all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel and explore more on our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Gratitude fills our hearts. And may God's abundant blessings continue to grace your life abundantly.